As of the time of recording, we are two weeks away from the Western release of Trails into Reverie, which to this day still has my favourite limited edition and my favourite steel case. And I remember the day when it was revealed well. It was the first Falcom shareholder meeting that I was keeping an active watch on, and it was marketed with the poignant phrase, this is the end, but also the beginning. And what an apt quote, for Trails into Reverie had a clear objective. It is an epilogue, a convergence of arcs that bridges the gap between the western side of Zemuria before it moves to the east in Kuro no Kiseki. For the record, I have played it once before and did a dedicated video on it around three years ago, so if you want a more in-depth look at the mechanics then you can check that out. This video, on the other hand, will not be a review, rather it's a brief overview of Trails into Reverie and some of the features specific to this localization. There will be no spoilers for this video, but game footage will be present from the first 10 hours of the playthrough. And initially, I want to thank NIS America once again for reaching out and allowing me to play it early by providing me with a PC code. And since it was worked on by PH3 Games and Durante once again, you know it's going to be a quality port. The game has all the options you would need as a modern player, features like periodic autosave, anti-aliasing, historic dialogue, a host of graphical options, multiple controller presets, and an option to push the FPS all the way to 360. Now I personally didn't go for that, I went for 120 FPS since, let's face it, this is still a Trails game, but I appreciate the offer is there if you want to use it. So far, my playthrough has been very stable and not crashed once, so excellent work from PH3 and Durante as always. As for Reverie itself, it offers quite a few options before you even start. Now, while I will say it is certainly in your interest to play the games prior, seeing as Reverie is a culmination of them in many ways, it does offer summaries for both the Cold Steel and Crossbell arcs that are fairly detailed as well, enough so that you can get the outline of what happened in those earlier games. It even has the 3 and 9 novel within this collection as well if you want the background on a couple of characters showing up in this game, once again demonstrating that even in-game books have purpose in the world of Zemuria, along with artwork from previous titles that you can peruse at your leisure. Last of all, there will be save carryover bonuses from Cold Steel 3 and 4, and the two Crossbell games when you start this one. Though if you don't have save carryover, you'll still get choices on who you deepened your bond with in the previous games, and though it's not going to feel as personal, it's a good compromise. Now when you start your playthrough, Reverie is going to feel quite different to many Trails titles you've played prior. Its structure is more akin to Trails in the Sky the Third in some ways, which we'll discuss later, though it has enough standalone mechanics that ensures it acts as its own unique title. About two thirds of the game will proceed in the way you're familiar with, that being a progression of a linear story. In Reverie, it goes about this by utilising the cross-story mechanic, coined as Trails to Walk in this localization. Here you get a choice between three separate routes with their own protagonist, those being Lloyd, Reen, and C. Players are mostly free to choose what route they wish to go down, but since the paths often overlap, to ensure that you don't get lost, they will be blocked off at certain points until you reach a milestone in the others. In these, you fulfil main objectives, and simply see the story play out. Now something to look out for during these routes concerns the cutscenes themselves. Reverie was the pilot title for something else that Falcom had been working on around that time. Since Cold Steel, they had used Sony's Fire Engine for development, but feeling that they wanted to do more with the series going forward, they decided to create their own in-house engine. Trails into Reverie was the first title to use it, and though it's only utilised in a select few scenes, when you see them, you'll be well aware of the difference. This engine has since been used for the likes of Kuro no Kiseki, Crimson Sin, and the upcoming East 10. Now the final third of Reverie in terms of gameplay structure will feel a bit different, and it comes in the so-called Reverie Garden and True Reverie Corridor. This functions as a hub similar to the Hermit's Garden from Sky the Third, where a wide array of characters congregate. 
You see, Reverie has a massive cast of characters in it, larger than any other title to date. As such, the true Reverie Corridor's main function is to keep your characters up to par. Here you'll find augment stations, equipment vendors, and the dungeon itself which you proceed through in Stratums. The dungeon will give you opportunities to level up and find further equipment to kit out your characters. This is not the only purpose though. As you go through the corridor, you'll find orbs split into silver, red, blue, and gold. The ones you really want are the latter three. Red unlocks minigames, blue unlocks episodes, which function similar to the doors from Sky the Third and still remain my favourite part of this game, and gold gives you further characters who will assist you in the Reverie Corridor. There's not really any RNG tied to these either, you'll be informed of how many of each orb are available when you revisit, and you simply reset the dungeon if you have some left over. However, the Reverie Corridor is not just a training ground, it also has a mystery of its own that will play out as you progress ever deeper, so keep your wits about you. But I will end it there, that is all I dare talk about. I reiterate this every time, these games are best played with a blank slate and I want you to experience this game as blind as possible. I remember playing Reverie back in 2020 and I must confess it was not my favourite title in the series and I put some of that down to knowing or at least having an idea of some of the big reveals, yet there are many who do hold it in much higher acclaim. Playing through it again though reaffirmed something to me, that no matter how many games I play, how many RPGs I finish, nothing will ever come close to Trails. No other series can make me feel the way that this one does. And Trails into Reverie is the visualisation of that, a game that is a reward in many ways for the time I have put in. Though the story in of itself for this game is still brilliant, it also has so many unassuming moments that, to someone who isn't familiar to the series, will mean nothing, but to someone who loves it as much as I do, has massive impact when you realise the story behind it. Some of the simplest moments in this game end up being the most emotionally taxing, and very few series are able to do that. Trails into Reverie is the final hurrah, the last celebration before moving on to the next chapter of this grand story. It is an opportunity to revisit but also say goodbye to many of the characters you have grown to care about, but as Trails so often does, it will make it all the sweeter when you finally see them again. Until that moment comes though, enjoy your time with Trails into Reverie. Thank you for watching this video, if you liked it please like and subscribe for more JRPG content and consider joining my Patreon if you're interested. Peace!